So I want to take a look at a clip from Get Up on ESPN in the past couple of days. Rex Ryan gives a lot of his thoughts on what he's seen from the Packers and what they've done with Will Levis. And so let's give a listen to this. He's also Greeny as well, um, you know, the host of Get Up. Here we go. What they're doing with Malik Willis in Green Bay right now, Rex, go. Look, I'm just going to say this. I thought this guy couldn't play dead in a B-Western, Malik Willis. I'm <laughs> being honest. Yeah. I watched him. He was absolutely atrocious. They saw something in this man that they said, you know what? We can do some things with him. You know what they're doing? They're running wide. They're running wing T offense, which is what every high school in America used to run. They took that package and said, you know what, Malik? Yeah, you might not be the greatest drop back guy. Here's the package you're going to be. And I'm going to tell you, it's an absolute problem for people. One thing we know, this kid can run the football. And you know what? He can throw it a little bit too. Way better than I thought. But this LaFleur to me, there's no way. I thought he, there's. I thought they were dead. No way they're going to win with Malik Willis. Well, you know what? He said, I saw some, something in him. I had a plan, and oh, my, is it working. And this coach is absolutely terrific. We've seen it in the past, but when he took a kid, this ain't Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. This isn't Jordan Love, first-round pick. This is a guy that people were left for dead, and rightfully so, I thought. And you know what? It just shows you elite coaching makes a difference. The guy is doing an amazing job. I don't know how they did it, but they simplified it. Here we have Teddy Bruschi. Fight it for this kid into where he is free because you could see the steam coming out of his ears Confidence. at times where he was like, I am just frenetic. And you see this right here? That's coaching. That's a screen pass. Mm -hmm. And defensively watching that, a well-run screen is a beautiful thing to see as an analyst, but it's so difficult as a defensive player because the sell, the footwork, the body language that every player has to have, especially the quarterback with his footwork. And so Malik, I'm like, that's a pretty darn good screen pass. And that's where I recognize, like, man, this guy's being coached really well. The system changes. Yeah. Like, he, he took his guy. Imagine that. He's not trying to take a, you a know, square, square peg, peg and put it around a yep. hole. Yep. No, he's like, you know what? Here, Malik, here's your dang offense. Right. And I tell you, moving forward, it's going to be a problem for people. And, and the Titans now are the only 0-3 team in the NFL. There are a few 0-2s who will play tonight. Get ready for so first off, I thought that quote to start from Rex Ryan was pretty was pretty crazy. He said, I thought this guy, talking about Malik Willis, couldn't play dead in a Western. So um, Malik Willis definitely showed the people who thought that what he was in Tennessee in his first year starting, where he struggled mightily in those three starts, he has completely turned that around and has looked like a completely different quarterback. And I think part of that has to do with the fact that that was nearly two years ago, and I would assume that he has gone through a lot of development as a quarterback just sitting back and not really having to play too much. You'd assume he'd pick up, picked up a lot of things along the way. But then also, the situation is so important. And there's no doubt that if you're a quarterback, you are 100% better off in Green Bay than Tennessee. Tennessee is probably one of the worst spots if you're a quarterback, to be honest. You look at their offensive line, which the Packers decimated on last Sunday. Um, Packers sacked Will Levis eight times. The Titans have one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. And so Malik Willis came into one of the best possible situations, a top 10 offensive line, a ton of young pass-catching weapons. And then I think the biggest factor that Rex Ryan did talk about was Matt LaFleur and what he was able to do with Malik Willis. And he played to his strengths. And I think that when you look at what happened with the Packers running game, they took it to another level. And, you know, in that first game when Malik came in, it was pretty much mostly, I can't remember the exact percentage, but it was like 70-80% runs. And now in the NFL, the Packers are first in rush yards per game at 204, second in rush yards per play at 5.5, and they are tied for most rushes of 10 plus yards with the Ravens at 19. And so this running game has greatly helped Malik Willis. And I think that if you wouldn't have seen the Packers able to find this level of success running the ball, it would have been a lot tougher for Malik Willis. When you have a running game, that's playing at, at this level, it makes it so much easier on the quarterback, especially you know on play-action passes when the defense is king on the, in on the run and thinking you're going to run every play. Then you pull it, you do the play-action pass, it just opens things up a lot. And Matt LaFleur is also so good at scheming open wide receivers. And also on Malik Willis, which I think we've, we're seeing right now around the rest of the NFL, it's that some of these guys who were struggling at their first stop in the NFL have completely turned their careers around just being in different schemes, different systems, as well as having a few years or more than a few years developing 
um, after coming in as a you know young quarterback. You look at Sam Darnold with the Vikings. I did not think he could play at this level. I think a lot of it has to do with the Vikings and their offense and, and the scheme they have there. Um, also, he's he's been in the league for a while now. And right when Justin Fields leaves Chicago, he is playing the best he's ever played with the Pittsburgh Steelers as a Packers fan. Um, it's great to see that he you know waited to, to sort of reach that next level until after he left Chicago. So thank you, Justin Fields. But I think that also shows that he's now in his, his fourth year and what they're doing in Pittsburgh has played to field strength. I still don't think that the Steelers' offense is that great. Their defense has definitely carried them. I think they're around 24th in points per game in the NFL. But Justin Fields is from around like 10 to 12 for a lot of statistical categories. He has a 95-ish passer rating, which is about 10 points better than it's ever been. Then you look at Baker Mayfield with the Buccaneers. Derek Carr really has has come to life a lot this year with the Saints. And even Geno Smith, the past couple of years, has played really well after struggling early in his career. And so then it makes you wonder, you know, what these teams should do who moved on from these guys. Because I understand if you've had a quarterback for two, three years and you haven't seen a lot, I do think it's hard, especially with, you know, fans and social media these days. It's hard for owners and GMs to stick with a guy who consistently has not had success. But I think we're seeing that lots of these players failing. I think part of it has to do with them and, and some of their struggles, but lots of it has to do with the players that are around them, their offensive lines, the offensive coordinators or coaches who are calling their plays. Because when you have Malik Willis, who the Titans didn't even value uh, more than a seventh round pick to think that he came in and did what he's done in Green Bay, if the Titans could redo that deal, I mean, Malik would be worth way more than a seventh round pick if you have a guy coming in and playing at, at this high of a level. He's honestly been one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL um, 122.7 passer rating, which is second to only Josh Allen with quarterbacks who at least have 10 pass attempts. And when blitzed, Malik Willis has been lights out 9 of 15, 124 yards, two touchdowns, and zero interceptions. So the Titans didn't know what they had in Malik Willis by trading him away. Uh, they, you know, he didn't win the backup job, which is surprising. And I don't think that Willis, if he was starting for the Titans, would look like he does in this Matt LaFleur Packers offense. Because the Packers actually have a offensive line that can can actually block. They also have a play caller who can scheme up great plays and misdirections and things like that. And so it just shows you how important the situation is for quarterbacks in the NFL. And I think for the Titans, it shows that you know you need to probably need some some better play calling over there. You also need a better offensive line. Uh, it's because Malik Willis has come to Green Bay and, and looked like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. So it's been fun to watch, and we'll see what happens this coming week if Jordan Love is back. If not, it'll be Malik Willis's toughest test of the year against a Vikings defense that has been very good and has been able to stop really good offenses, uh, including guys like you know Brock Purdy with the 49ers. So uh, that's all I have for this one. If you want more NFL content, feel free to subscribe down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at LukeBeller3. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.